everyone. We're just going to wait a few moments as everyone's entering into our webinar today. Well, I'd like to welcome you to the University of California, Berkeley and our virtual visit today. We want to thank you for taking an hour out of your day to spend with us. We know there's a lot happening out in the world, and so we're grateful you decided to spend that hour today with us. Now, just a couple housekeeping items. The virtual visit today will be a 40 minute presentation. We'll be answering your questions on the back end throughout the presentation. So use that Q&A function down below. We have disabled the chat, so ask us any and all questions you have using that Q&A function. Also, you will be seeing a couple polls throughout the presentation today. So as those pop up on your screen, please let us know and please answer some of those questions so we can get to know you best and tailor our tour to our audience today. Also, today we'll be giving you uh, the campus overview from a student perspective. We aren't a part of our admissions department. They have a separate presentation, which we'd recommend that you go watch and you go be a part of. But today we'll be sharing with you from our eyes as students at UC Berkeley. And we'll be ending in the last 20 minutes answering your Q&A live. Um, a little bit about me, I'll be moderating today. My um, name is Brianna, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm currently from San Diego, California, majoring in economics here at UC Berkeley. But the two people I really want to introduce you to today are Megan and Sarah. They'll be your campus ambassadors today. And this is a very, very special tour. Um, they've been with our program since they were freshmen. They've now graduated from UC Berkeley. And this is actually their last tour or virtual visit um, in their career as a campus ambassador. And so now I'm going to give it over to them so you can get to know them a little bit more. All right, thank you, Brianna. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah. I am so excited to welcome you to Berkeley virtually today. Um, so my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm from Lafayette, California. And like Brianna said, I just graduated in May. So super excited to, to um, kind of end my career this way, talking to you all a little bit about Berkeley. Um, I majored in architecture while I was at Berkeley and minored in Spanish language and literature. And then um, as for my involvement on campus, I was part of the College of Environmental Design Ambassador Team, um, which was really fun. I got to talk to prospective students and reach out to underrepresented communities and teach them about design and the potential of design. I'm also, um, I worked for the Bear Talk blog. I wrote for the Bear Talk blog about my experiences at Berkeley, which was amazing. That's something our ambassadors contribute to. And then I was also part of Designo, which is a student design collective that I started with some of my fellow architecture um, um, peers. And so we would, generate projects geared towards social design. And then I also got the privilege to be the Cal Day Corner coordinator, which I'm conveniently wearing a t-shirt for, um, as well as the virtual visit coordinator. So building all of these virtual visits to engage with all of you um, online. And then I am also part of a study hall college consulting service. So a um, few of my friends and I, we reach out to prospective students um, working on their college applications and kind of guide them through that confusing process to make it a little bit easier and more accessible. So now Megan. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I've been, like Brianna mentioned, a Canvas ambassador since I was a freshman. This is my first job, uh, so it's really just an honor to be here today. I'm also really excited to give this tour with my good friend, Sarah. She is one of the coolest people I've met at Berkeley. She designed these slides. It's just awesome. So thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm from Signal Hill, California. It's a city within Long Beach, which is about 20 minutes from Los Angeles. Uh, I just graduated in May, currently looking for jobs, but persevering through it. Uh, it's the Berkeley philosophy. Uh, I majored in cognitive science, which is the interdisciplinary study of the mind. I took classes in psychology, linguistics, computer science, some of the best departments on campus. I was really indecisive when it came to picking my major. So if you are not sure what you wanna study, feel free to ask in the Q&A. We have some really phenomenal ambassadors on the back end who are here for you to answer your questions. So definitely take advantage of this. Um, during my time at Cal, I was a mentor for FIRST Robotics competition team, 971 Spartan Robotics, very specific, I know. Um, but basically, I mentored high school students in the Bay Area to help them build 120-pound robots that compete in a different set of tasks. So I worked with high school students and some of the best engineers in Silicon Valley. 
Uh, I was also a decal facilitator. So decals are student taught classes here. Decal stands for Democratic Education at Cal. Uh, I taught a class on competitive robotics. And then in my freshman and sophomore years, I was heavily involved in the ASUC. Um, that's the Associated Students of the University of California. Um, and that is our student government here. Um, so I'm really passionate about Berkeley. My sister goes to Cal. My great grandfather went to Berkeley. And it's just a privilege to be here today. So I just want to give you a big, big welcome to our university. Um, a poll has just launched. Please fill this out so we can learn a little bit more about you. Um, and so while you are all filling this out, let me just talk a little bit about the photos here and the images on the slide. So while this is not the same feeling as giving a campus tour, I mean, being on campus, I hope that we can still capture some of that Berkeley magic for you virtually. Um, you can notice in the middle, uh, say their tower or the Campanile. Um, that is my favorite building on campus. It's the third largest clock and bell tower in the world. And it really signifies Berkeley's message and just lighting the way for people through education. Um, you can also notice Memorial Glade. It's a really popular place for students to hang out on campus. And then the GIF on the left is just an overview of what campus looks like. And then you may notice we are celebrating 150 years of women at Berkeley. Women have been at Cal since before they had the right to vote. And women were admitted only a couple years after Berkeley existed. So women have always been at Berkeley. Women have always been a part of education. Um, and I just think that's something really important to share during these times. Um, but from the poll, it looks like we, most of you are college or high school seniors. We have a couple of juniors, so best of luck with your college admissions. And like I mentioned before, ask us anything and everything about campus. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you a brief agenda, we are going to talk about a lot of information today. We're going to give you an overview of campus, tell you a little bit about our history, talk about academics, housing and dining, our residence halls, um, give you some health and safety resources, talk about student life, athletics, the different libraries on campus. Uh, we have a lot to go over, so just don't feel like you have to know everything, but we definitely want to leave you with what it feels like to be a Berkeley student. So feel free to right. go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, thanks, Megan. So jumping right into history of Berkeley. So Berkeley itself was founded in 1868. So we have a ton of great history, which is something that makes Berkeley so special. And that's also the reason that we are called a lot of different names. We were the first UC campus in the system of nine undergraduate colleges. And so we could be called UC Berkeley, Cal, University of California. If you say any of those names on campus, we are we will know what you're talking about. Um, so we have a lot of history, whether that be you know in academics, athletics, spirit, pride, things like that. Our mascot is the golden bear. So we actually have 23 bear statues on campus that you can find all around. One is on South Hall, which is the top left photo that you can see there. Um, and so on, you know, Cal gear, anything like that, you're going to see the golden bear as our mascot. And we do have Oski, who's our mascot that comes to all of the athletic games. And he's a fuzzy, huggable bear. Love him. He's always walking around. You might see him if you come on campus. And our campus size is um, in terms of undergraduates, just over 31,000 students, and then graduates, about 12,000 students. Um, so we have a large campus body, um, and you know, we, you really get that large community feel with a lot of different opportunities and a lot of amazing people that you can meet on campus. And we have so many amazing historical landmarks, and that's because we've been around for so long. We have buildings such as South Hall, which was the first building to be established in 1873. Amazing architectural history there. Um, we have the Campanile that's just mm -hmm. over, just a little bit over 100 years old. Amazing history there as well, as well as Sproul uh, Plaza, which you can see on the bottom left. And that's where, you know, the free speech movement happened. That's where a lot of student demonstrations happening um, happen a lot of the time. It's a really li alive campus, and there's always some Thing going on. And then Sather Gate, you can see on the bottom right, is an extremely famous historical landmark um, that you can see. Um, actually, there's like a famous photo of the free speech movement walking through that gate that you'll see a little bit later on. So it's really incredible and really inspirational to be on this campus where all of that happened and get to be a part of that history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. 
uh, one of my favorite quotes that I found on campus was about was from John F. Kennedy. Uh, he said that we may owe more to the development of the West than Harvard. And to put us on par with an institution like Harvard from John F. Kennedy, one of the most popular presidents ever, is just really inspiring. And so we've had Martin Luther King Jr. come to campus. Berkeley has been at the center of so much social change and movement um, that you just feel that when you're on campus. Um, so you may notice Sather Gate, the star above it, uh, you just feel like you're part of something that's more than yourself. Um, in the middle, you can notice Bertie the Bear. He is our largest bear statue. Uh, he is really fun to take a picture with. It definitely come to campus once everything is settled down. Um, you can also notice on the top right, that is our university seal. Uh, it was designed by Tiffany and Company in 1903. Um, and this is shared by all of the UC schools. So UCLA, UC Davis, UC Irvine, they all get this from Berkeley. And then below is OSCE. Uh, there is a really fun debate between Berkeley people, whether OSCE is cute or creepy. I will leave you, I will leave that up to you to decide for yourself. Uh, however, OSCE does really capture this quirky Berkeley, like, you know, we're weird and we own it sort of energy. So I really enjoy him. All right, thanks Megan. I will say OSCE, I love Oski, although he does sneak up on you sometimes, so you have to watch that on campus. So back towards um, the Berkeley overview, our campus culture, I think, is something that really sets us apart from a lot of different universities. And that is because we are change makers at heart, and that means a lot of different things. First and foremost, we definitely um, celebrate free speech, and we think that, that is extremely important to what makes our campus unique and what makes you know the world a better place. Um, and we were the birth of the free speech movement. You can see on the top right um, that historic photo. Um, it's incredible to walk on Sproul Plaza and know everything that happened there and know that you are a part of that history, like I mentioned. And so it's super inspirational that there are students still to this day that fight for their right to free speech and fight for their right to talk about you know, things that are bothering them, whether it be about their community or, or externally in the world. Um, students at Berkeley are really invested in making a difference and that starts with free speech. Um, and so going along with that leadership, students definitely take initiative and do the things that they are passionate about. Um, and a lot of times that does mean challenging the status quo, um, making a difference. You know, Berkeley does teach us to kind of search for ways that we can change the world. And that means, you know, challenging what is there right now and trying to make the world better, not just for yourself, but for your community. And then Berkeley also um, is incredibly devoted to entrepreneurship. We are the number one university in terms of startups and actually the, the number two university in terms of startups um, started by women, which is amazing. And so that's something that we are really pushing our students out into the world to make a difference in so many different ways. And then research and innovation definitely is at the heart of everything that we do. So whether it's in your classes or whether it's just your personal endeavors, our students are doing incredible things. I can't emphasize that enough. I'm inspired on a daily basis to push myself and do more and learn more um, about our community and the world around us. And then I would say the community is probably the number one thing that Berkeley, um, that I love about Berkeley. We are compassionate, passionate, and social justice is extremely important. And that's something that coming to Berkeley, I really valued. It was having that community that was there for you no matter what, having people that cared about you, and having people that were passionate about so many different things, things that I have never heard of, but then learned about and realized that that is so cool, cooler than anything I was doing. Um, spirit and pride. Berkeley is one of the most prideful schools, one of the most spirited schools, which is amazing. People say go bears towards everything, even if it's, you know, you're sad, you're happy, um, you know, you have a tough test coming up, anything like that, you can say go bears and you will hear a go bears back. Um, even randomly places in the world, you could say go bears and you'll hear it back from a random person. Um, diversity and ex excellence is also at the heart of everything that we do. The fact that, you know, having a student body that it doesn't just look like, you know, the same person makes us incredible. Diversity is extremely important to making a better world. Um, and public service, everything that we do is definitely devoted to making the world a better place um, and, you know, bringing other people up beside yourself. Um, so I think these values really stand out and kind of give you a good description of what Berkeley is all about. Um, and you can see some students here really getting involved, whether that be in student government or, um, you know, celebrating their identities or becoming part of a group that they really, um, that they really love. 
Yes, this is something that I've been really passionate about. Movements that have started at Cal since the free speech movement are the disabled students movement to give students who need more additional resources and access to an education. Uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, the University of California system had money invested in South African apartheid. If you don't know what that is, uh, it's really violent institutional racism. And once Berkeley students realized this, they held 24 hour shutdowns of Sproul Hall. And this energy still exists today, whether it's in Me Too, Black Lives Matter, or other important campus history moments. Um, when I was a freshman, I, and the 2016 election happened, I was on Sproul Plaza and there were 2000 other students there watching the election. And at how many places can you say that you all witnessed a moment in history together? Whether, you know, regardless of how you feel politically, there was something unifying us in that moment. Um, so you can also see, you know, these photos really capture what Sarah was describing. The, whether it's a protest about speaking out, whether it's rally committee below on uh, organizing a spirit event or in the top right, um, you can also notice the cutting head research that we're doing, whether it's in robotics or engineering, English, you know, some of, we invented the laser. Wetsuits were invented here. The process of photosynthesis was discovered at Cal. Like, I could rattle off facts to you like they were lottery numbers. Like, that, that's, that's what Berkeley is for me, and that's what it is for so many people on our campus. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. It's almost overwhelming sometimes the amount of things that happen to Berkeley that you don't really realize until you learn about it. Um, and kind of going along with that, especially right now, our global impact is incredible. Um, in times like these, you know, it's pretty inspiring that, you know, researchers, students, um, professors, anybody in this community is really dedicated to making a difference in challenging times. Um, and that's really where humanity comes out, you know, when we, um, when we need it most. And so Berkeley is really dedicated to educational justice, and that means a lot of different things. Primarily access and scalability, the fact that educational resources are now, now available online for students that didn't have access to them before. Um, and Berkeley is really pushing to make education a right, which is really inspiring. We also do have a student technology program that, um, that gives students computers, um, laptops, and hotspots in case they don't have the right resources to be successful in this new educational setting that we're all still kind of getting used to. Um, so that's pretty incredible. And then we also do have several different remote youth programs. Um, two to mention are in the College of Environmental Design and Engineering, um, where our professors, our, some of our students, researchers as well, um, are going online. You know, they're making this content available to students, younger students uh, specifically, that used to do summer camps here but can no longer come here. So shipping that over, um, over the internet and making it accessible, you know, despite the challenges that we're facing. And then we also are conducting an enormous amount of COVID research. Um, and that goes with trial testing. So trying to find ways to make the testing process more efficient, faster for better response time and being able to kind of, you know, um, push ourselves further in the right direction towards, um, towards healing our communities. And then we also, in so many of our programs, we're investigating the biological, cultural, economic impacts of COVID, um, just because it's become really clear that, you know, these challenges are, um, are making inequality clearer. You know, we know that these disproportionately affect different communities. And so doing that research, pointing out those differences um, is really important. So Berkeley has been really avid about doing that. And then advocacy and social justice have always been extremely important, and especially right now, um, where a lot of different things are coming to light in our community that we didn't really realize before um, or couldn't push for or, you know, weren't pushing for hard enough. And so things like human rights and anti-racism that Berkeley takes extremely seriously um, are super important. And so um, one of the things that's happening right now is when in our human rights lab um, on campus, um, there's a study going on about trauma, resilience, and burnout in terms of you know, viewing sensitive material online. That's really important to view, you know, in order to stay invested in the community and know what's going on and be active, but also can take a toll on, you know, your mental health and things like that. So it's about creating safe spaces to make sure that all of us can be a part of the solution and can contribute to, um, to definitely making the world a better place. Um, so a lot of these photos kind of demonstrate the amazing people that are working tirelessly on this campus behind the scenes. You know, you might not see them all the time, but they are working for us and for our community. 
Yeah, that was so well said, Sarah. Thank you so much. Uh, so we're about to launch another poll asking you what you are interested in. Um, please fill this out so that way we know what it is you want to learn about Berkeley and how to talk about academics. Um, there are five undergraduate colleges, the letter, College of Letters and Science, Rouser College of Natural Resources, Environmental Design, Chemistry, and Engineering. Um, when you apply to Berkeley, you apply directly into one of the five colleges. This can be, this is really important to know because if you're trying to transfer into the College of Engineering or Chemistry, that can be almost impossible. So if you're interested in any of those subjects, definitely apply there first. Um, it actually seems like most of you are interested in the College of Engineering. We do have a lot of social science people. Arts and Humanities looks like a close second, but um, we'll it looks like we have a good range. And lucky for you, I have taken a lot of classes in a lot of different colleges because I was so indecisive. So this is where the College of Letters and Science is the college that I am in. That's where COGSI is. It's about 75% of the undergraduate population. So majors that are in this college are like English, philosophy, computer science, uh, political science, political economy. As you can see, there are five divisions within this college, arts and humanities, biological sciences, math and physical sciences, social and various other undergraduate studies. 16 out of 23 of our Nobel Prizes come from the College of Letters and Science. This is abbreviated as LNS. Uh, there, there's an author I really enjoy called, his name is Viet Tan Nguyen. He was an English major at Berkeley. He wrote a Pulitzer Prize winning book called The Sympathizer about a half French, half Vietnamese communist spy living in America. And he actually came to campus to give a talk. Um, so the College of Letters and Science is really diverse. So you don't have to declare your major until about junior year. So if you're kind of like me and don't know what you wanna do, apply, you might consider applying to LNS. So you can move on to the next slide. All right, and then on to um, my personal favorite college, but I am a little bit biased, the College of Environmental Design. Um, so this college is the smallest college, um, and architecture is ranked number four globally, which is amazing. And there are four majors, so architecture being included. There's also landscape architecture, urban studies, and sustainable mm -hmm. environmental design. And coming into this college was actually an amazing experience because I got that small college feel while also getting the larger opportunities of the larger university. Um, and so you have this small, like tight-knit community where you can find really close friends. And a lot of these majors are really hands-on. So I spent a lot of my time making models by hand, you know, doing architectural drawings drawings, um, even cutting out books, you know, artistic um, projects, which was really amazing. And I'd always been a hard artist at heart. And it really took me a while to kind of embrace that and do it as my, you know, education and career. But this college was amazing for that. It fostered my creativity, um, but also love for social justice and the fact that design can be so many things in this world. Everything around us is design. Um, and so coming to learn that was incredibly amazing. Um, and the fact that there are so many resources in this college is also pretty inspiring. So we have access to, you know, laser cutters, 3D printers, wood shops, and all of that. Anything that you need to kind of make your creativity flow um, and come up with amazing innovative solutions, um, this college has it. There also is a separate College of Environmental Design ambassador team that I mentioned that I was a part of that does a lot of work reaching out to underrepresented communities and people that don't really know about the careers in design. Um, and so that was really great to be involved in um, and kind of connect to people that, you know, otherwise wouldn't know about this amazing opportunity at Berkeley. And the mission of this college is to craft ecologically sustainable and resilient, prosperous and fair, healthy and beautifully built environments. So it's always kind of bringing together all of the different aspects of sustainable building, whether that be, you know, through the environment, through cultural context, social context, economic context, et cetera. So this, um, this college is really, you know, far reaching. Thanks so much, Sarah. It's not like we needed another reason about why you're so cool. Uh, so different for me and you're so artistic. I, it's really representative of Berkeley's energy as well. You meet people who are so different from you and so cool in their own way. Um, the College of Chemistry is one of our most renowned. It's ranked number one globally with about a thousand students. There are three different majors within this college, chemistry, chemical engineering, and chemical biology. 
I am not a chem major whatsoever, but I can still be really hyped about this because that's how nerdy I am. Uh, 16 elements on the periodic table were discovered at Cal. If you are curious you and going to Stanford's virtual visit, I recommend you ask them how many elements they have discovered because the answer is zero. Um, but that's playful. Stanford is really cool in its own way. Also, Lewis dot structures were invented by Professor Lewis. This is a fundamental notation in the field of chemistry. Students in high school learn about Lewis dot structures. Also, the foundations for the Manhattan Project, which created the atomic bomb, were discovered in the College of Chem. There's some like debate between like Columbia, who actually did it, but that's besides the point. Uh, so I'm not advocating for weapons in any sort of form, but it's really cool that they were able to use math and science to change the way we think about energy. You can move on, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. So moving on to the Rouser College of Natural Resources. So this college is also incredibly special. It is um, a smaller college and it has an environmental focus in all of the um, different you know, kinds of studies that you can go into. So the biological sciences, nutrition and toxicology, ecosystem management, interdisciplinary studies, social sciences, economics and policy, all of these um, are really important in, ter in terms of, you know, fostering our environment and protecting our environment in a lot of different ways. And so what's really cool about this college, college is that it weaves all of those together and um, recognizes that, you know, solving our climate crisis and things like that are not going to happen alone, you know, from, you know, specific research in this one field, but it's the biological aspects, the economic aspects, everything that it lists here um, needs to all come together. So sustainability and social justice are definitely at the forefront of everything that you would do in this college. And this motto is a really amazing one, see the bigger picture, make a better world. This college um, actually leads, you know, a lot of the different ideas that drive Berkeley students and the fact that, you know, you want to see a problem and then fix it and you want to, you know, go out there and find solutions that are innovative and that um, that really inspire the rest of your community. So I love this college um, and it's also I would say one of the most beautiful places on campus. If you just look at those photos, like particularly the bottom right, um, so many trees, so much greenery. I really love being around here. Uh, another nerdy fact about the College of Natural Resources is that vitamins B, E, and K were first discovered there. And then there's like this campus rumor that tater tots were invented there. So just a little interesting. Uh, the last undergrad college we're gonna talk about is the College of Engineering. Um, this is the number one public university for engineering. It's ranked third after Stanford, MIT. Um, there are 11 different majors that you can apply directly to. You do have to take a couple of humanities and social science breadth classes, um, but most of your classes will be math and physics oriented. We actually organize a separate engineering visit because it's so there's so many opportunities in this college. So my sister is a mechanical engineer um, and she really loves it there. So Berkeley really pushes people in the field of engineering to be rigorous and to, and to just really understand why something will work and why it won't. Um, and that's just the advice that my mentors have given me after leaving the College of Engineering. Uh, so these, here are some of our graduate schools. There are nine of them. Um, there's the Haas School of Business. You can also study education, information, Berkeley Law, optometry, journalism, public health, and public policy. Some undergraduate departments do offer graduate programs. Uh, the Haas School of Business is a good example, and I'll speak a little bit about it. Uh, it was, it's one of the oldest business schools in the country. Um, the Haas brothers were nephews of Levi Strauss. And he bequeathed his entire, like, but his entire, all of his wealth to them. Uh, Bob Haas Jr., the Haas family, actually just donated $24 million for first generation college students. Um, this is part of the Fiat Lux Scholarship. Um, you can look, out, look this up at news.berkeley.edu, but definitely a big philosophy of Berkeley is giving more resources to other individuals. And I'll also talk a little bit about Berkeley Law. Um, this is one of the top nine law schools in the country. Actually, in the last couple of years, I believe two years ago, Ruth Bader Ginsburg visited campus, um, Sonia Sotomayor, the first Latino woman on the Supreme Court, and these were Q&A sessions that any students could go to. Any student, like whether you were 
not in law or an undergrad could go. You just had, it was just a matter of getting a ticket. And I've also taken a journalism class. So there are various programs. And if you're interested in graduate school, you definitely want to take a look at what Berkeley offers. Awesome. Yeah, that was such a good overview. I also was nerding out completely when Ruth Bader Ginsburg was on campus. I was just like, she's around me. Like I can feel <laughs> the incredible, you know, aura of her presence. Anyway, she's a cool woman. Um, moving on to structure and class sizes. So at Berkeley, there is a large misconception that a, like all of your classes are gonna be huge. And while that you know starts out to be the case in the introductory courses, what's really great about those larger class sizes is that there is a discussion section that goes along with that. So in that discussion section, it might be about 20 students or so. You have a graduate student instructor or GSI that teaches that class, works directly with the professor, knows the content you know that you need to learn and things like that, um, and will help you in a much smaller environment so you can talk you know you can talk with them and ask your questions you can go over past quizzes homework anything like that to further on the material that you learned in lecture from your professor and then also professors and GSIs both have to have office hours so that's time in their office where they're just sitting you know they're waiting for people to come in and talk to them honestly sometimes it doesn't happen they just sit there you know kind of lonely they're like I wish I had a student to talk to and that student could be you and so I would definitely recommend taking advantage of those office hours um, and so in general, class sizes are, the student to faculty ratio is about 18 to one. And 85% of our classes are fewer than 50 students. Um, and that is because, you know, because of those discussion sections, but also your classes start to get much smaller when you get more specialized into your field. Um, but some classes are just small anyway. So my Spanish classes for my minor um, were all, you know, no more than 20 students, which was amazing. So you could talk to people in Spanish, this different language and practice it um, and really get to know the language very well. And then there also are a ton of hands-on labs and studios, um, architecture included, but also science classes. A lot of classes have that component um, so you can get hands-on learning and work with directly with professors. Um, and resources um, for learning. There's a lot of really great resources. The most important one I would say is the SLC or Student Learning Center. And they offer free tutoring for students, but they also do mock midterms and exams. So for instance, in your big chemistry class, um, you might have a mock midterm where you sit down for three hours and take the exam and they'll go over it with you for an hour. And it, you know, it's a mock midterm. So it mocks a lot of what you might see on your test, which really helps you study and learn what you need to you know, study more on. And then individual advising, really helpful. I don't think I would have survived my transition to pre from pre-med to architecture in my first year without my advisor. They made it all possible. So definitely utilize those resources. Yes, take advantage of office hours. Our professors literally write the textbooks that other professors use. I had a professor in the College of in a computer science class that taught my mentors like 10 years ago and know that, that was, that's like the foundation of their field. So definitely get to know them and network. Um, so while this next semester is not ideal for anyone and especially not for us because we miss campus and we wish you could be there, but we are resilient and we persevere because that's what bears do. Um, the fall semester will be remote start and end. Um, we're gonna do our, we're gonna follow everything the CDC says we should do because we wanna protect you and we wanna protect ourselves. Um, in terms of the academic experience, all students have Zoom Pro included. So this is, this is a really awesome advantage because Zoom Pro is very useful. You can set up your own meetings. You can, you're not really restricted to anything. And also they're going to be synchronous and asynchronous learning. That means that some classes you will have to keep up, watch lecture every week. Um, other classes, they will organize it such that this is the material for the week and this is what you have to do. So although Sarah and I are not gonna be here to deal with, are not gonna be here to be part of next semester, um, we still know a lot about it. Please ask us in the Q&A and we'll direct you to the proper resources. And even then, resources are still available virtually. I made an appointment with the Career Center and I got an appointment virtually. So you can still find the resources that you need in advising, counseling, so on and so forth. And like I mentioned, resilience, key to being Berkeley. Oh, and you may notice Sarah in this photo with our good friend Conrad, who is also a campus ambassador. Cool, really cool guy. He was in the College of Chemistry. Awesome, yeah, Conrad's amazing. And, I, and it definitely, um, you know, even though virtual learning is, I would agree with Megan, even though virtual learning is definitely different, there's a sense of community that Berkeley still maintains, which is pretty amazing. And I've even gotten closer to people that, you know, I didn't talk to so much in person, but now I get to talk to them online, which is pretty amazing. 
All right, and now moving on to housing and dining, a very important topic for everyone looking to move to college. So our typical first year housing options that um, freshmen will find is um, these seven different options. So we have units one, two, and three, Clark Kerr, Blackwell Hall, Stern, and Foothill. Units one, two, and three are the most common. They're kind of our high rise dorms um, and you get multiple people in a room and it's a really great community um, to find you know, students that are living with you. You can interact with them. And some of my best friends are um, people that I met in the dorms. Clark Kerr is about a 15 minute walk from campus, a little bit further away. Um, and it, you know, it, a lot of these options are really amazing for students. It, it depends on, you know, where you want to be around campus or what academics you might focus on. Um, but you can definitely find really great housing options. Um, and then in addition, Stern is our all female housing. Um, so that could be a really great option for you if you want to, you know, cater the kind of community that you're um, that you're going to be a part of. Um, and I know a poll just popped up and it looks like we have a ton of people um, in the Eastern time zone. So welcome um, to the West Coast. Um, super happy to hopefully have you on campus soon in this housing. Um, we'll move on to some more details about housing. So these are again typical housing details. Freshmen do get priority when they go into this, um, these housing options, but it's really important when you're applying to these options to choose any room, any location as your last preference. And that will um, make it possible, possible for you to get an offer and actually live in campus housing. You wanna make sure that you do all of those requirements just so you don't miss out on something that you, you know, could have gotten. Um, and then there's a ton of resources in these dorms. So there's residential assistants that are usually older students Students that can kind of help you through the transition process, um, you know, plan social events, things like that. You can go to them with anything that you really need. There's theme programs for students that, um, that have communities that they really identify with or have identities that they want to find other people um, that identify that way and live with them. And so that could be women in STEM and engineering, that could be, um, you know, your cultural identity or racial identity activities you're involved in, really anything like that. We also do have um, a three-point security system in the dorms, which we'll go into a little bit more detail um, later on in the tour. Um, but that security system is really great for keeping our students safe in dorms, um, and you, you, you always know who's going into those residence halls. And then there are common areas where you can you know, do homework, you can plan different social events with your, the people that are living with you and everything like that. Um, and it's a really great place to kind of spread out. You know, if you get too, a little too cramped in your dorm, you can always um, you know, relax on the couch that's in there, things like that. And then also a meal plan is included and there are meal swipes and flex dollars that you can use when going into the residence halls. And once you get in, it's all you can eat. And I would say I actually loved the dorm food. My the lasagna was my favorite part of all of the dorm food. I would always go there. That was like my one thing that I wanted to do. Um, but it's really great because they have options and they will cater to your dietary needs as well. So that's really great. Um, and then a little bit more about housing during COVID-19. So obviously we are adjusting a few things. And so now priority is based on self-selected needs. So if you are someone, um, you know, depending on your economic um, situation or, um, you know, your situation at home, if you don't have a great environment for learning or taking online classes, um, that would be your self-selected need. But all of our dorms in order to protect our students are single occupancy. So you have a little bit more space and you have your own space. We also have, um, will require students to wear face coverings. There is free testing for students in case they do feel any symptoms. And there, um, we do require sequestration as, uh, as soon as students get to campus. And then there also are to-go meals. So you don't have to go into the dining halls or anything. You can get your meal um, down, you know, at the bottom of the residence hall area. And then there are still a ton of resources for students to kind of build that community because it's more important than ever. So we do still have residential assistants that will, you know, help you with that transition, help you with classes, anything like that. Um, there also are social pods and chats to kind of establish that community and get to know people that are living next to you so you can make those friends early on. And then we also have isolation housing in case you do feel sick at any point, we wanna care for our students and have a space for them. And then quickly on to transfer and continuing student housing, we have a ton of different options. You can apply for campus housing again, though freshmen do get priority, so you just have to know that when going into the process. But there are other options. There's the International House for International Students. We have affiliated properties that are around the larger city of Berkeley. We have off-campus apartments, which is probably the most popular option, and that's what I'm doing now. Um, you gain a little bit of independence, cook for yourself, clean for yourself, things like that. 
There are cooperative housing options where you do some chores to supplement your rent, which makes it a little bit less expensive. And there's Greek housing. And about 12% of our students on campus are involved in Greek, Greek life. So it's there if you want it, but it's not overwhelming, which is a great presence to have. Um, but you can go into the sorority house or fraternity house if that's your best option. And you can also purchase, purchase an additional meal plan if you're a little bit worried about you know, cooking for yourself for the first time. Thanks for that overview, Sarah. Housing is really important and you definitely want to do what's best for you. Um, also in regards to health and safety, keeping yourself healthy and protected will help you do better academically. And this is something Berkeley helps teach you through our resources. Um, there's, we have the Tang Center, which is a medical resource center about a block away from campus. You definitely want to take advantage of that whenever possible. Um, there's an urgent care there, primary care, physical therapy, they offer the physical therapy. Um, all students are automatically enrolled in SHIP, which is the student health insurance plan. You can waive out of it if you have comparable insurance. Tang is also organizing COVID testing and tracing, and, and they're hosting various frequently asked questions, webinars, and tips. Tang also offers psychological counseling, even if this is still useful because you can like learn about yourself and just getting to know like how you think can be really useful. So definitely reach out to that resource if you're looking for additional help. Uh, we also have the Berkeley School of Optometry, which is a graduate school. You can get your eyes tested there and get glasses done there. Um, Path to Care is a resource for survivors of sexual assault. Um, def very important. It's separate from CPD but definitely you want to take advantage of if you know anyone or if you feel like you need to reach out. And then various student clubs and organizations that help with stress relief are de-stress with dogs. There's a really famous Berkeley Corgi named Jojo that he's on Instagram. He's really cute. He has like a little cow harness, um, but definitely a resource you want to take care advantage of. And then at the end of every semester during finals week, the student government brings llamas to Memorial Glade, which is that big grassy area I was mentioning earlier. You can take pictures with them and they're very fluffy. Uh, so you could just move on. I'll talk more about safety resources now. Um, so in general, we have our own police department that's separate from the city of Berkeley. You def uh, there are also blue light poles located throughout campus. So you should always be able to see one if you're, um, if you're around. So just take a look and make sure they're there. Um, UCPD can get to your location in about two or three minutes. There's also Warn Me, which is like a email text system where if there's an emergency on campus, um, UCPD will let you know. And then residence halls have three point security. So you need a key to get in, you need a key to get into the elevator, and you need a key to your room. Um, so that's just those three steps. And then at night, um, there's a safety shuttle that goes clockwise and counterclockwise around campus um, basically every day, almost every day of the year um, from dusk until dawn. And if that's, if you show them your Cal ID, you can get on. Um, and also Bear Walk, uh, there are students who are trained and in uniform who can get you to wherever you need to go within a certain radius. Uh, my freshman roommates were actually on campus late at night and they use the service and they even got a ride home. So you definitely want to just do whatever you need to do to keep yourself safe. As long as you are vigilant um, and aware of your surroundings, you can do that. And all of this advice that I'm giving is true for whatever university you're at. None of this is, all, the only thing unique to this is are the resources that Berkeley offers. Other schools have different plans, however, like the safety tips I provided of being vigilant, not using your phone, not wearing your headphones while you're walking on campus late at night, going with your friends. That is advice that stays true no matter what campus you are on. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, and, and Berkeley's a city like anything else, but, um, but if you know your resources, that's, that's the most important part and you'll remain safe. Um, moving on to student development, so something that's really important on campus. Um, Berkeley really prioritizes students embracing their identity and finding their community um, in whatever that way may be for you. And so we have a lot of different communities at Berkeley where that you can join, that you can find resources for, um, whether you're a transfer student, undocumented student, um, you want to find students that, you know, identify the same way as you do in terms of sexuality, race, culture, anything like that. What's amazing about Berkeley is that 
those resources are there for you. Um, and we also do have a lot of ways that we support students who need it most. Um, and so, you know, the basic needs center, if you need food, um, we do have a food pantry. Um, if you're a disabled student or if you need more time on an exam, Berkeley does have resources for you. So it's all about, you know, kind of reaching out and, and looking for these resources, but they are here for you. Um, and they really make, you know, being at Berkeley really special to find that community and really, you know, become resilient because you have people that are, that are there for you and have your back. Yeah, definitely, Sarah. Uh, so just a little bit about student life. There are over a thousand red, our registered student organizations or RSOs. Um, you definitely want to learn about them because if you are passionate about something, it exists on the Berkeley campus. That is how big we are. That is how much we love to be connected to each other. Um, there are opportunities to volunteer. Um, I was a build mentor. I helped low income students my freshman year uh, with reading. Um, so that's just a Another opportunity, campus employment, the best job on campus, being a campus ambassador, really cool. You learn a lot about Berkeley and you become such a, you become such a better public speaker. And that, the number one valued, as I'm looking for jobs, the number one valued skill you can have is communication. So just a shameless plug. Um, but other internships, we are the number one feeder school to the Silicon Valley, so San Francisco, San Jose, Mountain View, Palo Alto, Berkeley, go Bears. Uh, Steve Wozniak, one of the founders of Apple, Berkeley alumnus. Um, you can study abroad. Sarah studied abroad, didn't you? Yeah, she did. Uh, so you can go to really cool places. If it's on the map, there are Berkeley resources there. And exploring the Bay Area, there's really nothing else like it. You, P Bay Area rapid transit, you can get anywhere. You just, there's such a sense of adventure in your organization and in your private life as well. Yeah, thanks for that great overview, especially, you know, Berkeley jobs on campus. Like Megan said, like I met Megan through this job. It's a job that I get paid for, but also like my best friends are here. Crazy. There, yeah, there's so many resources and that's all just to say, you know, get involved and, and find your people. Um, and then some remote resources for all of our students that may be starting school remotely. Um, we definitely have been building community even online. And so we have a lot of different social media networks. We do have our Bear Talk blog that I mentioned earlier. Um, and that has been, you know, even more active now that we're all online. People are talking about their experiences, reaching out to others. Um, there's also a ton of student groups and clubs that have adapted their activities online. They do social hours. They're still recruiting. They want students to be a part of their club. Um, so those are still going to be happening, you know, throughout our remote session, however long that may be. And then we also have departments that do different webinars um, for professional development, personal development. Um, we have guest speakers that come a lot of the time. So you could hear from amazing professionals in their fields that have this really amazing research or really amazing experience to share with you. Um, and you can log on just to a simple Zoom link. You could be in your pajamas and still, you know, listen to a Nobel laureate. That's pretty cool. Um, we also have GBO, the Golden Bear Orientation, that actually just started on Friday, I believe, um, for our new students. And so that's continuing online as well to help students find a community. Um, and so there's advising, you know, academically, there's preparation, there's networking, so you can find students, you can network with people that may be great, you know, career resources and things like that. Um, and so that is still all happening online and all of our students are still staying engaged. No matter where you go, you definitely want to just get to know the people around you. And especially for me, there's such privilege in being with such quality people 24 seven, even if it's over Zoom. Um, so just a little bit about athletics. In addition to being like a world class research institution, we are also home to some of the best athletes in the world. Um, we compete in the Pac-12, which is all the big schools on the, east, on the Western seaboard, Stanford, USC, UCLA, uh, Washington State, or University of Oregon. Um, like I mentioned, our rival, Stanford, uh, but go Bears. Um, we actually won the ax this past football season. Um, if you're not super competitive, you can compete in club sports. You can still compete against other schools, but they have different tryouts. And then if you just want to stay active and meet people, definitely want to try intramural sports. Um, you can 
just join. There's a small fee, but definitely available. And then Memorial Stadium is one of the most beautiful in the country, um, designed by John Galen Howard, who did all of our other famous campus landmarks. Um, it's home to the Simpson High Performance Center, where all of our athletes train. Um, Cal athletes actually maintain one of the highest GPAs in the uh, um, NCAA. Um, football players are required to maintain a 3.0. Um, Haas Pavilion is where basketball games are held, volleyball tournaments. Um, that's I got to be on um, on the on the in the center of Haas Pavilion with Oski, um, recognized as a campus ambassador, um, celebrating 150 years of women. So definitely, if you want to follow us on social media, you'll see that photo there. Um, and then I mentioned the RSF um, recreational sports facility. That's a full fledged gym on campus training, um, gym classes, aerobic classes. Um, you may notice in the GIF that's Cal Cycling. They are doing with some doing something called um, pelotoning, which is moving closer together to minimize air resistance. I'm a cyclist. I enjoy cycling and there are so many ways to um, get involved around campus. And then we have 207 Olympic gold medals. Um, if we competed in the Olympics as a country, we would have placed fifth or sixth overall just ahead of France and Germany. Go Bears. Go Bears indeed. Go Bears. All right. Well, if you're not invested in getting an Olympic medal, maybe you can get invested in some libraries and research on campus. So we do have 24 official libraries and over 13 million volumes, which is incredible. It's almost an overwhelming amount of resources. And we also have an extensive online network um, of resources that is especially relevant now, you know, now that we're all remote. And so if you want to find something for a research paper or just a personal project or anything like that, you will find more than enough resources, um, all accessible really at any time of the night too, because they're online as well. We also do have a, a lot of different opportunities for research. A ton of our students get involved and you don't just have to be in you know, the biological sciences or anything like that. Um, it could be history, it could be political um, economy, it could be you know, anything like that. And so we do have the Undergraduate Research and Apprenticeship Program or URAP for short, where you can apply to, to um, different research opportunities um, you know, at Berkeley or around the area and actually supplement sometimes for units. So you could take that, you could do research instead of a course. Um, there are also department specific opportunities that you can get involved in that are sent out, you know, via career mail, you know, emails or blogs or anything like that from specific department career advisors, um, as well as just talking to professors, you know, we have Nobel laureates on our staff that are, you know, talking to us that are teaching us and so you can get involved in their research if you show interest, whether it's data, data entry or getting out into the field and really getting involved. Um, Berkeley is the number one research interest institution, which is incredible. So please, please, please get involved in research when you get here. Some campus highlights. Um, it's really hard to share this virtually because it, but these photos really capture how beautiful Berkeley is. There are fire trails for hiking. Strawberry Creek is a natural creek that runs throughout campus. Um, the weather at Cal is such that it's cold enough where when you're walking up the hill, it feels normal. Um, something I really liked. The trees and wildlife is green. Berkeley is like Disneyland for nerds almost. Like you just like are so enamored by the buildings, um, the nature, the animals, the people. Um, there are deer that walk throughout campus and it has such a flavor of urban and rural feelings. Like, the architecture is really um, just so special. Like this is campus is why I chose Berkeley. That sent that that feeling when you step onto Berkeley is really unlike anything else. And I can only just say that. I, I and I hope that one day this is something that you get to experience. That was fantastic. I am so glad I was able to see that virtual visit between Sarah and Megan. They are both two of our most wonderful guides. And we've gotten a lot of questions, so thank you everyone for sending those in. Now we do have about five minutes left of our virtual visit today. So I'm gonna go over you know, some of the questions and then turn it over to Sarah and Megan to share their Berkeley story and maybe be able to answer some of these questions along the way. So one of our questions that came in, they wanted to know a little bit about what your favorite classes at Berkeley have been. And then we had another question where they wanted to know a little bit more about the academic rigor at Berkeley and specifically Sarah, how you were able to take on like leadership roles in clubs and also study abroad. 
And then Megan, if you could talk a little bit about your journey of finding your major and also just tell us like why you chose Berkeley. So I will start off with some of my favorite classes because I took so many. The science of happiness I took with Dr. Keltner. He's like the Berkeley psychologist that helped invent the emotion reactions on Facebook. And also if you've seen the movie Inside Out, he helped develop those emotions. And so he, this class basically teaches you what makes people happy and the emotions that help foster that. So that has to be one of my favorite classes of all time because I like want to take it again. And that feels weird to say, but you just learn so much about how to connect with people. I learned so much about how to connect with people in that class. So that has to be one of the coolest I've taken. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can quickly say a class that I've really loved that I've taken, um, which is one of my construction classes for architecture because it got me so hands on. I got to weld, I got to like saw wood, I got to do some cast concrete, like all these amazing things that I um, that I never thought that I would actually get to do like within a class. And so that was something that coming to Berkeley really surprised me is that, you know, the wealth of opportunities that are here is incredible. Um, and it could be anything from, you know, research or, or listening to amazing Nobel laureates speak, but also really getting in there and doing it yourself. Um, and kind of to ask, answer some of the other questions that were here. Um, Berkeley is hard, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, but it is hard. You're definitely gonna, you know, struggle academically, but that is how you know that you're learning. You know, if you don't struggle, you're not learning things. Um, and that is definitely something that I learned coming to Berkeley. I thought I had it all figured out. I was, you know, like I wanted to go pre-med and oh, I'm gonna do fine. I'm gonna get A's in my class. It might not happen and that's totally okay. And Berkeley will push you in a lot of different ways. Um, but to kind of answer about my Berkeley story, one of the reasons that I came here is because Berkeley has an incredible community. And that's something that saved me so many times over and over, because Berkeley is hard. Um, and, you know, and even studying abroad, you know, I was scared. Um, I didn't really, you know, know what was going to happen. But my community is what pushed me to be brave. And, and to me, bravery is not really, you know, being fearless. It's about, you know, feeling that fear, but still doing it anyway and pushing yourself. And the fact that I had a community that made space for me to fail if that happened and made space for me to succeed and grow was really what made me really successful at Berkeley. And I was able to study abroad because, you know, I had friends that pushed me, I had professors that said it would be so worth it. And so for me, when I came to Cal Day before I was admitted as a student, I felt that community before I even was a part of the community, which is something that I could not say about schools that were way smaller than Berkeley, which is incredible. And so I am so glad that I saw that initially and, and came to Berkeley because the community is the one thing that stayed consistent. You know, I went from pre-med to architecture. I changed, you know, activities I, I was involved in, but the whole time the community was there um, and they were passionate, they were compassionate. And, and I learned that everything that Berkeley students are is exactly what the world needs right now. And we're going into a world that needs compassion, that needs social justice and needs that so badly. And I am so excited that I got to have the education that will allow me to really change the world and make a better, better world and make a difference. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, my Berkeley story, this is my favorite part of giving a campus tour because you just get to say how Berkeley makes a difference to you. Um, every student at Cal has their own narrative. Uh, for me, Berkeley was like a challenge and an inspiration and the place I became an adult. Like this is the land of dreamers. If you have a dream and if you have a mission and you wanna be part of other people who have that, Berkeley will give that to you in ways like you can't even imagine. Like for every accomplishment that has come out of our school, there are so many failures that happen along the way. Like from the bad midterm grade that you got, from your breakup or just like the groundbreaking research that you're part of that doesn't work, there those setbacks become, you become strong against them because you faced them before. And I chose Berkeley because I knew it would just be the place that I could honor my family. I, my mom is a Cambodian immigrant. She escaped a war to come to, come to America. And I had the privilege of honoring the sacrifices that my family made. Um, this is the last time I'm ever going to do this, so I'm just going to be as full on as I can. I've seen a fire in my peers, my professors, and even 
in campus that's about being something more. Um, this is a light from our past and our present and our future and it carries on to people's futures. This is our motto Fiat Lux. Like, man, I could just, I could go on and on about this, but if I leave you with anything, anything, it's that the path to success is not linear. You will fall, there are going to be struggles, but if you are in a place like Berkeley, you're gonna have a guide that will give you the strength to literally face whatever comes your way. And by no means is any school perfect. I only hope that you can find a place that I've found in Berkeley, a place that gives you the freedom to dream and to go after anything and everything. So it has been, a huge privilege to speak to you today. It's been a privilege to be an ambassador and it's been a privilege to be a Berkeley student. And I thank every one of you who has been part of that journey. Go Bears. Go Bears. I second everything that Megan just said. Wow, you're incredible. <laughs> you are both so incredible. I am so glad I've gotten to get to know both of you throughout your time here at Cal and gotten to hear all your stories today. And I also want to thank everyone for taking an hour out of their day this week to come and spend with us. Um, if you'd like to hear more from our campus ambassadors, please follow us on social media on Instagram and Twitter at Visit UC Berkeley. Also, if we didn't get to answer one of your questions or you have another question, please email us at tour at berkeley.edu and a student ambassador will answer your question and get right back to you. Also, as Megan and Sarah mentioned earlier, we do have a Bear Talk blog where us as campus ambassadors share our Berkeley stories with you all. So please check that out at beartalk.berkeley.edu. Also, if you want to see another recorded virtual visit, you can check that out on our YouTube channel, again, at Visit UC Berkeley. If you want to learn a little bit how Berkeley's responding to COVID-19, we have a link on the page right here, coronavirus.berkeley.edu. Also, as our ambassadors mentioned earlier, this year marks the 150th year of women being admitted to our university. So to learn a little bit more about our year-long celebration, you can check out 150w.berkeley.edu. Also, if you want to learn a little bit more about our admissions process, our admissions department has their own presentation um, that you can check out at admissions.berkeley.edu slash visit. And with that, I want to thank you all for just spending this hour today. This has been fantastic. Megan and Sarah are both phenomenal guides, um, and I really hope that you got to learn a little bit about Berkeley today. And with that, we finish everything here at Berkeley with a one, two, three, go Bears. So can I get it? One, two, three. Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears! Go Bears. <laughs> Thank you for spending an hour with us today. Have a good rest of your day. Bye now.